Hello, welcome. My name is Manuel from Kata Studios. Today we are going to learn how to create a new user in WordPress and assign a new user role to that user. Okay. So the instances where you need this to be done is in cases where you have a client who you don't want to mess up with some of the tools you have, possibly your builder or stuff like that. Okay. You don't want the client to get in touch with that, but you have the you want the client to have full access to their website or basic access to your website, which we are going to be discussing in a little while. Number two is that you have a cool pilot or a cool designer who you want to introduce to this platform to help you fix a problem or help you install a new plugin, register a license or do one or two things in the website possibly help you modify a particular bug you find in the website so you can create a new user for that particular person and then assign them a role after which you can delete their user that particular user okay so this happened in two cases but this is just the basic course i'll be bringing a more advanced course which is more detailed where we can assign a role to a user and limit uh, your function based on the plugins or the tools we have available for this you are going to see what we can achieve with it but in the later course of this we are going to be able to assign a user to elementor itself using the elementor user role specifically and then we as you can see the role manager from here from there we can limit the amount of thing the user will be able to do with elementor so to create a new user you're going to scroll down to you find the option that says user at the bottom part see this option over here okay that's what you need to click on so click on that user uh, from there you're gonna find all available users so now we have a user so it is assuming I am the only user here which is the admin as you can find here and you see administrator and sometimes you are working on a website and sometimes it's misbehaving you don't know what's going on and you need to figure out what's the problem you need to find out if there's someone else who is having an admin user role so delete the person because the first account that is admin that is actually enrolled in this have the ability to remove all other admin that comes after them so let's get straight to create a new user to do that hit on the add new user at the top corner and here we can add the name we want to give to the user call this kata2 and email which is required so fill in the email we want this is the email we want to assign and this the first name and this is the last name but this is the username this is the name they are going to put as the username Okay, and they can also use their email as the username. Then they can now put their password, whatever, whatever it is. If person have a, a website, you can put that here, but it's not, it's optional, it's not important. You can generate a password for them if you want to, okay, by clicking on this button, or you can create a new uh, password for them. They can also leave that blank so that you send them the email details. So from there, they can change their username and password. You understand? So from here, we can select the role we want to give to them. Let me explain these rules one after the other so you understand. So we have the shop manager. This is someone who is able to manage the products and inventories in the website. If this is an e-commerce website, you'll be seeing this option. We have the customer. This is usually someone who is registered in the website as a customer who purchases products from the website. This is SEO editor and SEO manager. SEO manager is someone who, who manages the search engine optimization. Possibly you have a search engine tool in the website like we do. We have the Yoast SEO as you can see from here. So we have the manager and editor. Editor role also give the uh, ability to this user to be able to edit some things, but won't be able to alter some of the functions in the search engine optimization role. So if you give someone a search engine manager, they won't be able to see some other things like the Elementor and all of that. You get the point. Uh, that's just the a little briefing I want to give you from there. Then we have the subscriber. This is just a basic subscriber. If in case this is a subscription based website, this is the contributor, somebody who wants to actually put in info, uh, uh, their uh, comments about the products or services in the website, maybe contribute one or two things in the website, uh, also suggest things for the website, but won't have the ability to add or remove anything. Okay. Here is the author, somebody who is uh, have the ability to make a post, a blog post, or possibly a an advanced custom field post or a dynamic post stuff like that okay or a listing posts so uh, an author will be able to do that editor will be able to edit some informations in the website possibly edit a role of a user edit some informations like edit uh, the teams templates edit the products if there are products in the website edit the blog post he'll be able to edit the blog post even be able to edit the blog post that a contributor and an author wrote because an author will be able to write an uh, uh, a post but can't be able to edit another user's posts okay but 
an editor will be able to edit these posts that are made by this author and even alter them or even delete them if they want to. An admin is the highest level in this criteria. An admin have ability to do everything that all of these users are able to do. Okay, so you want to give somebody an admin role, just hit on that. Admin will be able to see everything that is in the website and be able to manage and edit most of the things you can find here. Okay, so from here we can hit on add new. Okay, once we have filled the basic information, hit on add new and an update information will be sent to the user email. So this is where we're going to find our login data. So click on this and you're going to find the login data, which is the admin uh, login access and then we have the uh, WP login access from here. Okay, so we can click option here and copy the link if we already have the password sent to us. Now, if we uh, actually set the password, you can send the user the password, but the user can change their password by clicking on this link. So we click option, copy link. Let's try this in an incognito mode. So now let's fill in our password because we need to actually do that. Okay, save password and we can log in now. So now we can put up our username and then we fill in our password. We are logged into our uh, dashboard. As you can see, this is a fresh dashboard with the username Kata Graphics, not Kata Studios anymore. Okay, so now we can control and manage many things as much as we can from here. Now let's get back to the previous dashboard. Let me show you something very quick. This is Kata Studios, as you can see, the other one is Kata Graphics. So there we can do some management, modify some things and so on. Now, there are two things I want to show you. I want to let you know. Number one is this. For those who watched the last uh, tutorial on WP Hide Login, last tutorial we did on how to protect your website. If you actually have this WP Hide Login, and most cases, you created the account and sent to the person before you actually configure this WP Hide Login. You make sure you have to copy this extension name and send to the person. This will be the link they are going to click to log in, not the default one that will be sent to their email anymore. Not the default one that's sent to their email anymore. You get the point. So I just wanted to make that clear so you understand very well. Okay? So make sure you have that in mind. Whenever you are getting, uh, giving them access, make sure you are giving them access after you have finished setting up the security and everything you need to set up in the website. Or even if you do it after then, make sure you do what? Give them the link so it's easier for them to uh, figure out how to do what to do. So now, if in case you have this user, you want to actually give them this uh, link, you want to actually give them a link to login, or the user want to use a link to login, if they copy this link, which is katastudios.com slash WP admin to login, it won't work, okay? Until they copy the link, which is what? katastudios.com slash WP admin uh, kata 9, depending on what we set our security for, that is the one that is going to work. Now, that is the link they need to copy. If they just copy this link, say copy link, okay, and that's the link you are going to send to them. Let's say we log out from here. So now they paste the new, the new link and they remove that extension and hit on enter. This is going to lead them to an error page. As you can see, we have an error page, which page can't be found because we are actually using a link which is not uh, propagated for that particular function. So that's it, guys, on how to give access to people to your dashboard while you maintain your own access as the rule. We are going to be bringing a little more advanced feature where we can give some functions to an editor and still allow them to do some of the things in the website. Till we meet next time, do have a wonderful day.